I'm Ian Harford. And I'm Steve Wild. And we're about to embark on our epic wild boar hunting adventure to Hungary. But before we get set up and go, we'd just like to run through the equipment that we're going to be using on this trip, give you an idea of what we're taking with us and hopefully what's going to help us stay warm, dry and comfortable uh, on a pretty cold adventure. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be cold, so we've got to be prepared, haven't we? Yes, we do. So here's what we've got. Um, starting at the beginning, underwear, I tend to wear sports underwear, man-made fibres, lightweight, stretchy, breathable and with wicking properties. So even though we're going to be sitting around in high seats, uh, we still need to make sure that any moisture that does accumulate if we're too warm is transported away from the skin and has the opportunity of being dissipated. So I have short underwear and I also have long johns uh, that'll go underneath my bib overalls which come on to in a second. Socks, we're going to be doing two different types of hunting in Hungary. We're going to be stalking and high seating on the first day. Uh, hopefully for a mouflon or a wild boar or whatever might come along. And then the driven hunting itself, which is a lot more static, uh, a lot of sitting, a lot of waiting. So depending on what we're going to be doing, I've got liner socks and then lightweight merino socks, which will be good for stalking because there's a lot more, should we say, ballistic type movement. Blood's always moving. And then if we were sat down for the wild boar hunting itself, uh, I have some heavier weight thermal socks and some waterproof sealskin socks. So that starts down at the bottom. Then we have two different types of clothing. I have my hunting layering system, traditional layering system from Deer Hunter. Now that starts with a Greenock base layer, man-made uh, brushed fabric, nice and warm, uh, great for transporting and wicking away moisture. Done by insulating fleece layer, thin, tightly fitting fleece, zip-up jacket. And then that will go underneath my Deer Hunter Mouflon hunting suit. Now depending on how cold it is, I might also put this Cumberland gilet, quilted gilet, or the Cumberland quilted jacket I have here with the arms as well. Uh, so when coupled with the Mouflon suit, that'll pretty much keep you comfortable down to minus 20, minus 30. We're hoping it's not going to get that Don't want it that cold. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants it that cold. In addition to that, we have our kind of camp or lodge type clothing. Uh, so we have a couple of pairs of lightweight trousers, Deer Hunter Strike and Deer Hunter Lofferton trekking trousers. So cotton, nice and relaxed and comfortable but warm. It's a Deer Hunter bamboo shirt, which is good for keeping you cool, it's great wicking properties. Through to the heavier weight brushed cotton shirts, which are good, have great insulating properties. I also have a, a jumper or a sweater uh, and the Deer Hunter Retrieve fibre pile jacket. Really good. It's pretty warm, so uh, we're going to be nice and warm out in the field uh, and nice and warm when we come back to the lodge. It's really critical that when you have been out in the field and you've been active and you might have picked up some sweat during the day, whether you sat down or you're walking, you give your clothes time to dry. So change out of your hunting clothes, get those all strung out, get them all dried out and get yourself some nice comfortable camp clothes on. So moving from that, we go over to our hunting suit itself. So this is a Deer Hunter Mouflon winter jacket. Two different lengths in the Deer Hunter Mouflon collection. One which comes just above the thigh and this winter one which comes down just to above the mid-thigh level. It does have a popper system so that if you're sat in a seat it can fold up onto your thighs. This is a fabulous high technology winter hunting suit. Great insulation, Deer Tex membrane so it's waterproof and breathable. This utilises Realtree Max 5 camo which is one of my favourite patterns. Certainly good for this time of year when all of the vegetation has died down it's all kind of browns and yellows so it works perfectly but the functionality of this jacket is well it's, it's pretty incredible lots of different storage options pockets as you can see these have hand warmer pockets deep bellows pockets also that have ammunition slots in them it has a hood a nice deep insulated hood i tend to wear a blaze orange cap just for safety to make sure people can see where i am I'm moving down into the trousers these are bib trousers nice high cut all the way over the kidneys at the back keep you nice and warm full length zip down fly and also has a full length zip down the leg which makes getting in and out of the trousers nice and comfortable so highly functional top end hunting suit ideal for colder weather conditions so back onto the extremities and I'm using these Ariat Catalyst boots. Now these are unlined because the same boots I wear during the summer but I use the socks to layer up to the level of insulation that I need. Great waterproof, comfortable, functional boots and coupled with that I have some Deer Hunter boot gaiters. We could be walking through some pretty muddy wet areas so trying to keep the bottom of your trousers dry, stop stuffing it into the top of your boots is, is pretty critical. And then of course Deer Hunter also make the Mouflon glove that matches a the suit. These have fingers that fold back so that you can 
get your trigger finger out ready. The rest of your hand stays nice and warm. So hopefully, with all of that, we shouldn't catch a death, should we? We should stay nice and warm. So coming on to the shooting equipment, Wildy's going to be using his Blazer R8 Professional Success in 300 Win Mag, and that's topped with a Hawk Frontier 30 one six by 24 So it's a great little scope, nice and compact, low magnification, ideal for ballistic targets. His also has the target turrets and a ballistic reticle. It's a little bit complicated for me, but while he's got that analytical mind, he can <laughs> figure out where he wants his, his reticle to go. Uh, I'll be using my Sauer 404 in 338 Wim Mag. These two are both the same rifles we took to Alaska, so we're pretty, yeah, I'm confident, pretty familiar now. That has an Hawk Endurance, one to four by 24. Slightly lower magnification, low profile turrets. I don't really need the mag when I'm shooting driven targets anyway. I like to keep a nice wide open view, you know, around one or two mag maximum. And also the joker of the bunch, which is one I'm really looking forward to using, is a Howard 1500 in 308 Winchester. And that's fitted with a Hawk Reflex red dot sight. So very pointable. It's got a 18 inch varmint barrel. So it's a heavier barrel, but the red dot sight and that GRS stock it's, um, it's very pointable, isn't it? And we used it to great success when we were in Wales earlier in the, in the year. Yeah, we did. It's a little bit different. Not only does it have that ambidextrous GRS Berserk stock, which fits nice and comfortably, it can be adjusted to fit your dimensions. Because it hasn't got the scope on it, it just feels that a little bit more pointable. Yeah, it's an incredible gun. So really looking forward to using that. Mm -hmm. And even shooting targets freehand out at 200 yards. It was fine, absolutely fine. I was, yeah. you know, was surprised because both really, didn't it? So shooting it's really good. Shooting a 10-inch disc at 200 yards with a red dot sight. And it just gives yeah. you a huge amount of confidence that when we get to it, Hopefully we're not be taking them at 200 yards, but we can do it. Yeah, we think we can. So really happy with the rifles that we've got there. Very familiar with them, put them through their paces, but you've seen that already. On to ammunition. Steve is going to be using Hornady Superformance SSTs, 180 gram 300 Win Mag. I'm going to be using 338, exactly the same bullet, but 225 grains. And then for the 308, we're going to be using Lapua Megas in 185 grains. So. Hopefully there's plenty of punch power there. Yeah, we've got some horsepower, haven't we? Yes, we do indeed. So uh, we've taken 60 rounds of each, which should be enough. We're going to be shooting at the Blaza shooting cinema, so we've taken a little bit extra there to yep. we can have a bit of fun. Yep. The ammunition, absolutely critical. Cleaning kit and tool kit. We we'll have a rod, jags, phosphor bronze brush, pull through, oil, all the things we need for basic rifle maintenance. Moving on to other shooting equipment, Hawk Frontier ED binoculars. This is a brand new model from Hawk. You've not used them yet? I have not used them yet, no. Steve's still got his endurance that he used in Alaska, which we're both huge fans of those endurance binos. Absolutely fantastic binos. It's interesting to see how Hawk have taken that next step further. I did use them when I was out stalking at Kelmarsh from Muntjac a couple of weeks back, and they work really well. Nice, lightweight, very crisp image. Hopefully they'll do the job for us, but we'll see that in the next couple of days. When we're out stalking, we have the thermal. So this is a Helion XP50 thermal imager. Now you've used this. Very, very good. I have, we're still pretty new to thermal imaging, but what it does do is give you a lot more time to acquire targets. Especially when you're high seating in woods, because you can, when the low light's coming or it's coming light, you can have a scan around and you can pick the bodies coming up before they hit the rides. So especially when you're culling, yeah. it's a really, really good tool. So I'm gonna see how this works for acquiring targets on a driven hunt. Now, of course, you've still got to make sure that it's the right age, sex, species. So, you know, a running blob through the woods is a running blob through the woods. But what this does allow you to do is see that animals are approaching before you can see them with the naked eye. You can see them through the brush. So if you can see something's coming, you can get yourself ready, get your binos in place. Well, that's right. It gives you that extra 10 seconds, doesn't it, to yeah. be on before it crosses the ride. And depending on the woodlands or the depth of cover that you're shooting in, I think this can make the difference between yeah. actually making a shot good shot and then not being comfortable too. So interesting to see how that works. Now we have a slightly different approach to our shooting sticks. I like my Vanguard B62s. As you can see, these are all kind of scratched and dented and well, they've, they've seen a hard life. <laughs> and you use these Spartans. I do. So tell me a little about those. Well, Ian calls them my gimmick sticks, but I love them to bits. They're very lightweight, carbon fiber. They're a tripod stick instead of a bipod stick, extendable up to the height that you want and they fit directly into the stock of my rifle by a magnet system. And like I say, I love them to bits. And you've got 360 degrees turn on them, so you can pivot wherever you want to be, but I love them to bits. We also found that they're very handy to use as a drying rack when we're Alaska. <laughs> yeah, because my clothesline. Yeah, so if you, if you put them out, you can hang your guns on them, hang your coats on them if the sunshine comes out. So they're multifunctional. Uh, they certainly are. Yeah, whereas my B62s, they don't do that. They just 
No. I just stand there and hold my gun or on my <laughs> bino. So slightly different approach, but always when you're going out stalking, take a set of sticks with you. It gives you an extra 100, 150, 200 yards. Of course, if we need to take a free hand shot, then we're very capable yeah. of doing so. But giving yourself the opportunity of having that steady arrest, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. Moving a little bit further forward, Peltor Ear Defenders. Once again, you use exactly the exactly same Exactly the same model, yeah. Both myself and Steve for years didn't use the right quality of hearing protection. Both got tinnitus in our left ear, which can be handy, I suppose, if you're getting shouted at by the missus. Well, you can just clock a deafen, can't you? You it's can. It's always handy to clock a deafen. But you know, as I get older, it's, it's dead handy having these things. Not only to protect your hearing, but if you turn up the volume on these, you can also hear game approaching. Yeah. I can hear where, whether it's a squirrel in the woods or if it's a wild boar in the woods, often they sound the same. Then you know there's movement, you can get yourself ready as they're coming out. Yeah, they do magnify the sound really well. Oh, they do. And, and it's I, a good sound. And I can also hear if Wildy's cursing me or, or saying nasty things, or, <laughs> or if he's missed a shot, because he, he uh, tends to curse himself then. So absolutely use ear defenders of the best quality that you can afford. Forward. Getting a little bit towards the front, first aid kit. Wild boar hunting, um, if done properly, of course, is, is as dangerous as any other sport you might undertake. But there's always a chance that you might wound an animal or come across a wounded animal and you need to be prepared for all eventualities. So I have a first aid kit with a trauma kit in there. Yeah. Hopefully nothing's going to happen to us but better safe than sorry. So we'll make sure you're going prepared. I have this knife here, my OKC Cayuga knife, an amazing piece of steel. Steve yeah. uses a bigger one, calls it Excalibur, um, <laughs> yeah. which is about a foot in length, but he's a big guy and he can use that sort of knife. So really, really good knife. I also have a Blade Tech knife sharpener. This doesn't actually sharpen the knife, but it just puts the edge back on. Pigs can be very tough. Yeah, and very gritty as well in the hair because they wallow to keep themselves warm. So there's nothing worse than taking the edge off a knife than a bit of grit mm. in the hair as you're coming through the skin. So. And it can make for a long day. It um, can. A blood they're knife big, heavy animals, wood. lots of fat inside them, thick, heavy fur. So if we do get more than one pig, you're going to want to put that edge back on it yeah. uh, before we get to work again. Now, Steve's probably going to criticise me a little bit here because he's a man of the mountains and a wilderness guy, but I also take particularly when we're going somewhere like Hungary, a set of hand warmers. These ones, you just open them up and they react to the air. It's gonna be between minus three and minus seven. So it's always good to pop those inside your gloves, keep your hands uh, nice and tight, keep those fingers working, because after about two or three hours out in that high seat, you'll be thankful for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will. <laughs> so I've given them some anyway, you may not use them. And the final piece of the puzzle on the left-hand side here, Sumo Jet Boil. Most that, important. The most important thing. We're gonna be out in the woods, out in the wilderness, it's gonna be cold, and that's what that's for boiling water, we've got travel mugs, so it's just a matter of getting out on the tailgate in between drives when everybody else is drinking alcohol-free beer. I'm going to get myself wrapped up with a coffee and I'm sure Steve will have a tea. So <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, nothing too complicated, nothing too outlandish. Tried tested equipment. All of this gear we've either used in Alaska or stalking. Stalking, it's the same stuff that we use basically every day of the year. Yeah. Just because you're going to a different country doesn't mean you need to change your equipment or your approach to it. No, it's just common sense hunting, really. Mm. It's what we use. You've got to gear yourself up for the appropriate situation, haven't you? Yeah. Wherever you go in the world, really, so. The most important thing is to keep yourself dry, warm, and comfortable. Yeah. Because uh, then you make better decisions, you'll sit still in the high seat, and when the animal comes across, and you, you'll be ready to take that shot. And when you get back to the digs, first thing you sort out, get your rifle dried out, get it oiled, get it cleaned, get it ready to go, sort out your optics, dry your clothes, and then look after yourself. And then you can have a drink. So hopefully, that's all we're going to need. We're now going to put it all into our duffel bags. We've got a nicely organised packing system for the truck because it's me and Wildy plus there's two camera guys. So we need to make sure everything goes in there. It's all accessible, but it's not a big mess on the inside. And then we're going to hit the road. Next step on from here, we're going to go to Belgium. We're going to visit a good friend of ours, Frederick Van Drom, who has a gun shop just outside Bruges, and try and get an idea for what European hunters take when they go driven hunting, see if there's any tips that we can pick up. Every day's a learning day. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So the next time we see us, we'll be loading the truck. Perfect. Let's get to work. <laughs>